in response to your news this morning that you were aware of a number of CPC parliamentarians and former parliamentarians that are at risk of being compromised by foreign interference, Mr. Todd has advised that he has received a number of top secret briefings and in none of these briefings has the name of any conservative parliamentarian or candidate, past or present, been brought to the attention of Mr. Todd. Why is that? Justin Trudeau's time on the stand went from bad to worse as he was confronted with a lawyer from the Conservative Party who called out his lies and hypocrisy that he spouted earlier in the day. And let me tell you, Trudeau was not happy about it. Let's take a look. Am I correct that you have top level security clearance in government by virtue of your office? Yes. Do you know which minister is responsible for the communication security establishment, sir? Yes. Minister of Defence? Yes. Do you know Ms. Uh, Zita Astrobas, sir? Yes. Uh, she worked on each of your uh, Liberal Party election campaigns in 2015, 2019 and 2021, correct? I believe so, yes. And she worked in your PMO office as your Director of Issues Management until 2017, is that correct? That sounds right, yes. Are you aware that she was Chief of Staff to Minister Blair in 2021 in the lead up to the 2021 election campaign? Yes, that sounds right. And the Commissioner has heard that a uh, politically sensitive warrant application that would have empowered CSIS to investigate foreign interference languished on Ms. Astrobas's desk for approximately 54 days in the lead up to the 2021 election. Are you aware of that fact? Uh, I believe there are uh, questions about the, uh, the dates involved. Okay. Who is this lady? Why are they talking about her? Probably you may have never heard of her before. Well, she worked in Mr. Blair's office at the time. He was Minister of Public Safety and you know responsible for CSIS and all this stuff um, in 2021. And um, she was also close friends with liberal power broker and suspected foreign interference collaborator, liberal Michael Chan. So... Allegedly, what happened was CSIS had a lot of concern about Mr. Chan, and they wanted to um, put him under very high amount of surveillance, which they needed a warrant to be able to do. And the warrant would need to be signed by Minister Blair at the time. So they sent the warrant along. The warrant ended up on this lady's desk. Hmm, my friend is going to be under surveillance by CSIS. I'm just going to keep this for a little bit. And this didn't end up on Blair's desk for 54 days. That was 56. 50 something. <laughs> Almost two months. A long time. Way longer than it should have. It typically takes, what was it, between five and ten days to get one of these warrants signed, signed. And, and put into action? Correct. It took between five and ten times as long. And uh, when Mr. Bill Blair was asked about this in the commission, he didn't seem concerned or bothered about this at all. So, this is why they're asking these questions. Uh, does that mean that you disagree with the overall time period of 54 days? Yes. Okay. And how long, in, in your understanding... My understanding, it was, it was a number of days before it, it, it was... Uh, a number of days within those 54 days before I'd ever uh, got near uh, Ms. Astrovas's desk. Okay. And but again, these are things that I have learned over the course of the various testimonies uh, over these past days, not anything I was aware of uh, at the time. Okay. Have you heard the, day, the, the figure 54 days uh, at all in connection with these proceedings? Uh, I've, I've heard that you used it yesterday. Okay. And if... if if the, that time period is correct, 54 days, have you learned uh, at all or do you have any understanding as to whether that length of time for the processing of a CSIS application for minister approval for uh, a warrant is uh, 
ordinary, out of the ordinary, extraordinarily out of the ordinary. Do you, have you formed any view on that? Because I have, as Prime Minister, absolutely no involvement in the process whereby uh, CSIS is granted warrants. Uh, I have no frame to uh, conclude on that. What I can lean on is, I believe, the director of CSIS raised that there was no flags about the timelines involved. Okay. Mr. Uh, Blair remains in Cabinet today, sir? Yes. Okay. And he serves as the Minister of National Defence today, doesn't he? Yes. Okay. Just give me a second. And has Minister Blair or anyone in his office at the time that he was Minister for Public Safety faced any consequences for the fact that that warrant application we've come to know did languish uh, uh, in that office for what I'm going to suggest to you is a period of 54 days? Like I said, the director of CSIS himself testified that he had no uh, issues with the timelines involved, and I can certainly say that I uh, continue to have full confidence in everyone involved. Okay. I want to uh, switch subjects. You leveled some criticism and professed bewilderment at the leader of the CPC this morning not agreeing uh, to receive a security clearance. Before we move on. Bill Blair, this is the guy, okay, this is the guy who, when he was in committee, his favorite answer was, I didn't see that email. I didn't see that email. No one sent me that email. I didn't see that email. I didn't have access to my emails. Well, and that's a, a testimony that we're hoping to get to as well. Well, and... It was pretty damning, I would oh, say. Oh, it was... T <laughs> well, no, but this this is even before. This is, I'm not even talking about his testimony at the commission. This is testimony <laughs> at committee when the Conservatives ripped his, ripped his face off um, when he was talking about this stuff. Um, that, that was his favorite answer. I, di I didn't read my emails. And then he said, oh, well, you know, I didn't even know I had an email because I couldn't access it. So here's the thing. So when you're in government, you have your regular email account and you also have access to encrypted emails. Now, in some cases, they will give you an encrypted email account and a non-encrypted email account. And in other cases, it'll just be the same account. Just depends on what your position is and how how sensitive the information that you're getting in these email accounts is. So what Blair's contention is, is he actually never accessed his secure email account. That's pretty important for a minister, is it not? You would think, especially how long, was, you know, he was, he was in that position for a long time. What else did you miss? Like that's, this is literally your job. Well, and, and that's it, you're getting paid 200,000, no, ministers, $300,000 a year to do this job. You can't go to your IT support guy and be like, hey, I can't access my email. You know, the, the email that I'm being paid to look at. Well, it also sounds like he didn't even check it when he was minister. So, and then Mendicino seemed to have the same problem. No one would tell him anything in, in his uh, department, allegedly. Like well, what, what it honestly sounds like all of these liberals do, as well as the prime minister, is they get into these positions put their feet up and start smoking cigars. Well, I was going to say that's because the guy at the top, Trudeau, just permits them to do whatever he wants. He's not on top of them, making them work, making sure that they're accomplishing things for Canadians. He doesn't care. So why would they care? Well, and that's the thing. He sets the tone. They just play the tune. Is that correct? Yes. Am I correct, sir, that Mr. Pellievre has said that the reason he does not wish to receive the security clearance is because he does not want to be constrained in terms of the use he can make of the information that he would receive? I don't believe that was his argument. I believe his argument was that he wouldn't be able to talk about the information he received. How is that different than what I just said? Because as leader of a political party, you have many, many tools at your disposal to act on information you receive. You can uh, choose to not sign the nomination of a candidate who is under a cloud of suspicion. You can uh, choose to not elevate them to a critic's position. You can choose to not promise to make them a minister one day. You can, uh, you have many, you can choose which committees they sit on. Uh, a leader of a 
party has a many, many tools that they can use uh, that are uh, not requiring him to speak publicly about his knowledge. Uh, the leader of a party has uh, quite a bit of power over uh, what uh, happens within that party, and that's why the ultimate decision maker in a political party should always be the leader. So here we go again. Trudeau's trying to say, "Oh well, you know, um, he can, he can, he can just, you know, not elevate them to a certain position." Listen to the, listen to this mentality that Trudeau has. So you know, we're going to give him the ability to know who these people are. But we're gonna we're we're just gonna allow them to be there. We're gonna allow them to be in a position where they're a, a member of parliament. They're being paid by taxpayers, but he won't be able to do anything. Where these individuals can can vote, they represent us. Like we're not all in the House of Commons voting on the bills that we want. No, we have to trust that our member of parliament is going to do the right thing and vote on our behalf. If you have a, a member of parliament who is representing a foreign entity, you cannot count on them to vote for you. Exactly. Are you aware that there are other security cleared individuals within the CPC that can and do receive regular security briefings? Um, I think you're, you're, you're speaking of, of uh, Ian Todd, the chief of staff. Among others, yes. Um, I, I can't help but imagining how people would react if I sort of sat back and said, well, no, Katie Telford got cleared on this information. She made a determination about who could run uh, for me or not, and I don't need to worry about that sort of stuff. Um, Canadians didn't elect, or Conservative Party members didn't select Mr. Todd to make decisions about who could run for the Conservative Party of Canada. They expect Mr. Polyev to take those decisions, but he has decided that he doesn't want to take those decisions. Sir, just over the lunch break, and you didn't mention Mr. Todd at all in, in the bombshell disclosure that you made today, but just over the lunch break, in light of that, uh, in response to your news this morning that you were aware of a number of CPC parliamentarians and former parliamentarians that are at risk of being compromised by foreign interference, Mr. Todd has advised that he has received a number of top secret briefings from the security establishment, and in none of these briefings has the name of any conservative parliamentarian or candidate, past or present, been brought to the attention of Mr. Todd. Why is that? Oh my gosh. Ooh, that's <gasps> called a trap, folks. You know what? He walked right into it. Uh, and this is the problem. <laughs> this is the problem. You can't make these grandiose claims and expect that people aren't going to react to them. But this is what Justin Trudeau has done his whole life. He just thinks that everyone's just going to do what he says and shuts up about it. Well, if you're going to twist the truth, you need to make sure that you've got all your story straight that you have every avenue counted for and you have receipts yeah so um this is going to be an interesting one to hear because uh, we haven't heard this yet uh, you'd have to ask uh, ceases for that but my uh, supposition is uh, that mr todd is not the one who uh, is responsible for determining uh, what uh, what candidates uh, can run or not for the Conservative Party of Canada, that it would be the leader. And much of the information that is handed out uh, to uh, various uh, individuals with security clearances is uh, determined on their need-to-know basis. Oh, so it's CSIS's fault. Okay. It's always CSIS's fault with this guy, you know? They don't listen to CSIS, so CSIS goes to the media. That's CSIS's fault. And you don't think the chief of staff would need to know that there's people in the party that are compromised, well, really? Considering he's responsible for the staff. You indicated today, as I indicated earlier, in a very public forum and in a very public manner, uh, your knowledge of the names of CPC uh, parliamentarians and the risk that they're, uh, they risk being compromised by uh, foreign interference. Am I correct, sir, that one way that you could arrange for those threats to be mitigated is through the use of threat reduction measures under Section 12.1 of the CSIS Act? Um, uh, threat reduction measures are tools that CSIS has used regularly in um, many cases regarding different parliamentarians, and it is very possible that a number of those parliamentarians will have had visits from CSIS and either defensive briefings or others to try and mitigate the risks that they are going through. Uh, that is different from a leader choosing 
to willfully remain ignorant of um, very serious uh, contentions, including by the ENSICOP, that the leadership race that elevated him to leader uh, was compromised by foreign interference. So yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> like... He doesn't say names, but he's implying it's Pierre, but just saying the leader, leadership race, you know, like he's not, he's not naming names, but. Well, again, I find it very rich that hours earlier, he says, oh, I'm not going to talk about, I'm not going to talk about, name that party in this instance, because this is sensitive. But not sensitive enough to sensitive smear your opponent, right? Yeah. And, and not make these vague allegations. And here, and and this is the problem. This is why Pierre doesn't want the briefing because Trudeau knows that only he, only he, has the ability to say anything because everybody else is bound by gag order, so they can't dispute it. Right, so if Pierre takes that briefing, then Trudeau's going to be all like, well, why isn't he doing anything, et cetera, et cetera. It's a trap. It's, it's entirely a trap. And if the tool of the TRMs were used, you couldn't use the leader of the opposition's reluctance to obtain security clearance as an excuse not to provide that information to the CPC. Isn't that correct? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not following. Can you rephrase the question? Sure. If, if someone wanted to get this information, this, this information about the names of the parliamentarians, for example, uh, because of some in, imminent threat to the leader of the CPC, TRMs could be used, and in, in that event, it wouldn't be necessary for the uh, leader of the CPC to have obtained security clearance. No, you're, you're entirely wrong on that. If, um, if you were to know that a certain candidate had uh, a high degree of exposure to foreign interference and vulnerability, either witting or unwitting, um, giving a threat reduction measure to that candidate would not necessarily, and quite frankly in my experience, highly unlikely to have the con candidate uh, spontaneously decide to step down as either a candidate or a, minister, a, a member of parliament and not run in the next election. Um, that is a determination that only a leader can make, looking at the vulnerabilities of that candidate, looking at the behavior, and to use the uh, words of the NSIA, uh, potentially uh, poor judgment or inappropriate behavior or untrustworthiness. Those are the kinds of things that only a leader uh, can actually ensure for the team that they're building. And, you know, potentially future ministerial elevations that uh, would then have to run into a security clearance process that uh, would stop them like a brick wall. Uh, knowing that as a leader, as you are hoping to uh, become prime minister of this country, um, would seem to be a very basic bar to hit if you want to take uh, national security seriously. Um, I think what the lawyer's point is that, okay, so a threat reduction measure is kind of like a briefing or a um, a meeting with a person to talk to them about what the threat is and, and how they can reduce it. Trudeau is assuming that the threat reduction um, uh, measure is going to be a meeting with CSIS with the person that is actually compromised. I think what the lawyer is saying is, well, if there is an actual threat, then CSIS would meet with Pierre. Right, to say like, hey, so there's a threat potentially in your caucus or they're trying to come into your caucus via election. So um, this is what you should do. Or this is what you need to know in order to make a decision. Yeah. And again, I, I put this back on Trudeau. So he, if, he, if this is true, let's just assume it is. So he knows who in the Conservative Party is working against the interests of Canadians right now is for all intents and purposes, committing treason. And he's doing nothing. Right, because to him, it's more important to make Pierre look bad than it is to stop this potential threat. And again, this potential threat may or may not even exist. And I would ask the question, does this not make Trudeau complicit in treason? One would think. That would be the real important question because you have the leader of the country knowing that treason is being committed and doing nothing to stop it. 
Well, and you have the chief of staff for the conservatives saying, I've never been told that it was a conservative individual. Well, and it would be it would be reasonable that the chief of staff of the conservative party would be told at least about potential candidates that are a problem. Right. But nothing. But the premise, the underlying premise of that answer you just gave is that the TRM has to, can only be directed at the person affected and not the leader of the opposition. Isn't that correct? Uh, I love being right. <laughs> I love it when that happens. We, we often don't watch the footage the whole way through. We'll just kind of take snippets of it and play it and, and we'll react to it essentially live or we're live anyways. Um, so it's just funny when it lines up like that. <laughs> this actually, it explains the, the, the lawyer's body language. When Trudeau was responding, he was just like, oh my God, this guy. <sighs> well, and speaking of body language, somebody's sitting there clicking a pen. It's very annoying. And uh, the lawyer's hands when he had moved back from the podium were free. So I think it's Trudeau. I think he's very nervous. Could be. The TRM could be directed to Mr. Polyev. The. This is called checkmate, folks. <laughs> checkmate again. <laughs> and he's trying to he's trying to figure a way out of this. Like yeah, he's... you can you can just smell the burning of the wheels turning. Oh yeah, and it stinks. In his brain. <laughs> Identities of the people involved um, are themselves classified uh, and available to only those with top secret clearances. So certainly CSIS could go to uh, the leader of the opposition and say, you really have to be careful to instruct all of your MPs to stay away from this country or to be concerned about diplomats from that country or not accept money. But from or not accept uh, support from these particular diplomats, but the TRM would be unable to identify which of those individuals are in question unless the leader chose to get a security clearance to be able to hear those names. And the fact that the leader does not leaves him in a position of being un able to protect the integrity of his party. I'm going to suggest that you're wrong on your understanding of the law as to what a TRM can and can't do and who it can be directed to. And I'm going to suggest that the, the fact that you leveled this accusation earlier today and didn't mention the possibility of a TRM was just for the purpose of grandstanding here today. Oh. Wow, that lawyer is good. And he did it in such a calm way. And look at Trudeau. But Trudeau was like, Oh my, I'm so offended. <laughs> You're caught, buddy. You are caught. Wow. And, and, and this is the funny thing because... So Trudeau was in this seat all morning and then the lunch break and he's been in the seat all afternoon and this guy's just been waiting, waiting for this. But you know, this is the stuff that Canadians do not see unless you share it with them. So please make sure that you show your your relatives, your friends, your coworkers, anybody who's thinking about still voting for this man, that look at how he lies. Yeah. And you know what mainstream media has been showing? Trudeau going after Polyev. Of course. The earlier Be clip. Well, because it's in their financial interests to keep the liberals in power. Right, they're not showing this part. On the contrary, uh, threat reduction measures uh, are regularly used to uh, highlight to people potential vulnerabilities. But having uh, watched many uh, in having known a number of parliamentarians who went through TRMs, they often come out of TRMs with a general sense of having to be more careful. But specifics are often not given, and there is no guarantee that a TRM to the leader of the party uh, would include the names of the people most at risk or most engaged in uh, potentially problematic activity. And that's why the refusal of the leader to actually access the intelligence on those names uh, is, as I said, bewildering. Do you agree that uh, often when CSIS or some other security agency uh, shares classified information, the recipient is severely constrained in what he or she can do with that information? Yes. 
Okay, and in fact, your own chief of staff yesterday gave evidence that the recipient of that information would not be able to use that information in any manner. Do you agree with that? Uh, no, I disagree. So that is true. So yesterday, Katie Telford um, testified that anyone who acted on, on any of this top secret information um, would be subject to criminal prosecution. And she even said, and even if you were to try and corroborate it with a piece of evidence that was not related to the information that you heard, and then you acted on it, you would still be subject to criminal prosecution. That's what Katie Telford was saying yesterday. And now Justin Trudeau was saying, oh, that's not right, because that's not aligning with my narrative. Right. And this whole narrative of why Pierre won't get the clearance, or sometimes you'll hear that he can't get the clearance for some reason, both are untrue. Again, he gets the clearance now, he can't do anything. He waits until he's prime minister, he can get the clearance, and then he can do something. Uh, the party leader can choose to uh, not allow someone to run for them for any number of reasons, knowing in the back of your mind that uh, this is the real reason, but giving it as an example, I'd actually prefer to have this other person run instead, or uh, you had uh, 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 you know, sketchy business dealings in the past, that means we're not gonna go with you. There are all sorts of reasons that do not uh, prove injurious to national security. The leader has a level of power over who runs and what roles they have that doesn't uh, require them to explain themselves. So again, the choice that Mr. Polyev has made to not avail himself of available information, uh, of readily available information to him if he were to get a security clearance and choose to take national security issues seriously is uh, unfortunate and shows a lack of seriousness around national security. And in your uh, salacious testimony earlier today, you mentioned that you're aware of the names of past and present conservative um, parliamentarians, former parliamentarians, candidates that uh, are in risk of being compromised by foreign interference. Uh, I'd like to ask you, are you aware of the names of any liberal parliamentarians, former parliamentarians or candidates that are at risk of being compromised by FI? Yes, and for other parties as well, because I have access to uh, large amounts of information. Right, you didn't mention those today, right? Um, we spent an entire uh, session, uh, the last time we had a public hearing, talking about uh, concerns and named individuals that, uh, that, the, uh, that CSIS and intelligence agencies had uh, within the Liberal Party. Don Valley North comes to mind as a writing. So right. as I have said many times, there have been actions taken uh, and choices made based on information we got because I had that security clearance. Right. Mr. Polyev has decided not not to get that security clearance, so he can't even know how to begin or not to make decisions regarding that information. Okay, so you've acknowledged Mr. Dong. Um, uh, I wanna see if, uh, if you can help us with, in connection with uh, the warrant application that we were talking about earlier, that I was talking about earlier with you. Um, uh, can you confirm that either the target of the information or one or more of the individuals on the Van Wienen list uh, were liberal operatives, sir? We object to that I question cannot. on the grounds of national security. With all due respect, uh, Madam Commissioner, when it suits the Prime Minister's purpose to say that there are conservatives on a list that he can discuss uh, or he can't discuss, that's fine. But when I ask for confirmation if there are uh, liberal operatives that are on a list, uh, I said yes. my friends... Well, I'm asking you in particular on that, on that list there. But that, that is... On that the warrant or on the Van Wienen list? Uh, the, the Prime Minister has absolutely no engagement or authorities or involvement in the granting of CSIS warrants. That's a very different thing than uh, concerns about parliamentarians who may have been exposed to foreign influence. And your attempts to conflate them uh, are simply ineffective. Well, you're attempting to evade the question. I just asked you if any of the names there were liberal operatives, not whether you could or couldn't do anything about it. That's all I'm asking for confirmation of. Well, if we're, I'm not sure what we're talking about. If we're talking Thank about the warrant, anything that might be related to the warrant, then there's an objection to the question. I'm sure there is, Mr. Government Lawyer. I'm sure there is. So, uh, but the, um, this was the, the last of the questioning of Justin Trudeau, but it was brilliant because it's like, okay, so, you know, 
when you're using every opportunity to say, oh, well, you know, there's potential conservatives. Okay. Are there potential liberals? Oh, uh, yes. Well, and then at the beginning, he's like, oh, well, I, I can't say, you know, I'm not going to name parties, blah, blah, blah. Right. But, but I will name the conservatives. And, and this just goes to show, to me, this is disgusting that our prime minister is going to sit there in a public inquiry. And instead of focusing on safety for Canada and for Canadians, he's focused on taking down his opponent, Pierre Polyev. Well, and why is that, right? Why is that? It's because Justin Trudeau has been no doubt either watching or being briefed on how the public inquiry is going. And it's not going well for him. Well, look at how he's behaving. Look it, at how he's testifying. Well, but this uh, the reason why he's testifying this is because all of his officials that have been testifying have made it to look like incompetent morons because that's what they are. And it's made his government look like what we've all suspected and what the allies have been saying is that you guys don't give a damn about uh, foreign interference. And you can't be trusted. So Trudeau is getting really annoyed that the Liberal Party is taking hit after hit after hit when it comes to this public inquiry. So all he can do is go on the offensive at the end and turn this into a complete gong show. And frankly, it just makes him look that much worse, in my opinion. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what happened at the uh, public inquiry today plus another like three hours on top of what we've already shown you, but uh, we don't have that much time and um, most of you don't want to hear that much of Justin Trudeau. So uh, this is what we have, but um, I think the, the conservative lawyers, you know, really did a phenomenal job Absolutely. of exposing Justin Trudeau for what he is, um, especially uh, the conservative party lawyer batting cleanup at the end and oh boy, did he clean house and Justin Trudeau He's probably going to remember that testimony for a while.